beauties, today I'm going to show you my hack on how to match your blush and lipstick every single time. I had a message from Melissa the other day saying she always struggles to find the right shade of blush to match with her red lip and did I have any recommendations for shade matching. So hopefully you'll find this useful. I have shown this in various tutorials before but this is more of a dedicated video to show you how it works. I'm going to start with a nude shade first and then we'll work up to a red. So this shade is Thanks It's Mac, which is a taupey pink nude with a silver pearl, which makes it slightly more cool toned. Sometimes when you're wearing something that's slightly more cool toned, it's harder to find a blush that matches. Warm tones all tend to work a little bit more harmoniously. So the hack here is to use your lipstick as your blush. Depending on the finish of your lipstick will depend on how you're going to apply your blush or how you're going to use this as your blush. As this particular colour is a sheer shine lipstick, it has a glossy lustrous finish to it and it is more of a balm type lipstick, therefore you can apply this straight to your cheeks, you don't need to mix it with anything to tone it down. Also because it does have that glossy finish, it will also add a little bit of a shine to your cheeks which is so beautiful, therefore you don't need to add a highlighter either. So this application is so straightforward, super simple and as you can see it works beautifully, very monochromatic. Next up, I'm going to use the shade Wonder Wheel by Lisa Eldridge. This is part of a luxuriously loosened lip colour range. This is another sheer to semi-sheer lipstick. It's in a satin finish, but it's very glossy on the lips, super comfortable. But because it has that semi-sheer finish to it, it means that we can blend it onto the back of our hand, wear it as a blush, and it's not going to need to be toned down necessarily. Obviously we won't layer it the same way we would layer it on our lips to create a more opaque finish. Instead, applying this onto the back of the hand first and dipping your brush into it, we can then take off any excess pigment from the brush first before going straight onto the face. Now don't panic if it comes out quite pigmented, it is super workable because it is a cream. I like to dab my brush onto both cheeks first to deposit the majority of that colour off of the bristles and then I bounce over it to blend it. And because I've got a double ended brush I use the opposite end just to soften the very front of my blush so it looks nice and seamless. And once again even though this is slightly punchier we have a beautiful monochromatic finish on the lips and the cheeks. Okay moving on to our first lipstick in the red family we're going back to MAC and this is the shade Chili. This is a brownish orange red. This is the perfect autumnal shade as fall comes in. As you can see, the colour payoff of this is a lot more opaque and it is a matte finish. Therefore, this going straight onto your cheeks would be a little bit too intense. So that means we're gonna have to do something with it to make it much more workable. You've got a couple of options. If you wanna stick true to the colour that we've got on the lips, you can mix this with a little bit of moisturiser. Moisturiser will affect your foundation, so you do have to be very careful with your application. My preference is to mix it with foundation. It does change the tone slightly, but I'm okay with that because the majority of the tone still works with what we've got on the lips. It just makes it slightly softer, which I think makes it more acceptable to wear on your cheeks. I like that it gives a slightly more hydrating finish with the foundation in it. Obviously it does depend on what foundation you're mixing in. I would recommend using the foundation that you are wearing that day. I am wearing the HD Skin Finish Foundation by Makeup Forever and I will link it in the description bar for you. It's one of my favourites and it also helps to make this very long wearing on the cheeks. This is not a lipstick that I would have ever chosen for myself. I'm not a massive lipstick wearer, but I really love this. I could see myself going out in the autumn wearing this to go and get myself some sort of a pumpkin spice latte. And as you can see, the finish of them work perfectly together. Next up, we have this colour by Lisa Eldridge. It's called Strawberry Shock. It's part of the Insanely Saturated Lip Colour Collection. I can't tell you how beautiful the finish of these lipsticks are. They're so comfortable. And Lisa describes this as a sun-filtered red that hides a dash of shocking punk pink extremity at its heart. It's a demi-matte finish with a 100% full coverage. So again, this one will probably be too pigmented to go straight onto the cheeks, but it really does depend on your preference. You might want a real shocking blush. But for me, I'm going to work that onto the back of my hand and then a small amount of foundation into that. Because the tones are there, it doesn't matter that it is slightly lighter, it will still work beautifully on the cheeks because that colour from the lips is in that mix that you've created. 
Because we are starting to work with colours that have a bit more punch to them, that's a slightly more opaque, you might find that you need to go in with either a clean blending brush or a brush that has a little bit of foundation on it and then bounce that over the top just to soften it further. You may not want to do this all over the blush that you've applied, but certainly at the front, just so that there's a beautiful graduation of colour as it goes onto the cheeks. I really, really love this combo. I think it's so summery and would work beautifully on holiday. Before I do the last colour, I'm going to show you how I've been transitioning between each colour. I'm using some Micella Water by Dr. Sam and I'm literally just removing the blush and the lips. Because I'm using the HD Skin Foundation, if you've seen my review, you'll already know this, it's one of those foundations that you can layer and layer and layer and it doesn't look cakey, it always consistently looks seamless and it just blends into itself. So once my face has dried, it means I can go straight back in with a layer of foundation and it will seamlessly blend into the areas that I've not removed. What's great about this foundation as well is that it is kind of like waterproof, it stays put all day, but you can lay a foundation over it and it never looks cakey, that's why I chose it for my wedding day. I wanted it to be tear proof, sweat proof, but at the same time if I needed to top it up throughout the day, I could do so effortlessly. However, once it was on, I didn't need to top it up, I didn't touch it throughout the day once. But here I'm showing you that by layering over the seams of where I've already applied foundation, you can't see it. You cannot see it even up close. It's the most perfect foundation. Then each time I removed it and reapplied it, once I gave it a few moments to sort of dry down, I went in with a little bit of powder bronzer and then I go in with my foundation brush to press that into the foundation. That way it just looks that much more seamless and it means I can apply everything very quickly between each colour. So that's what I've been doing. I've also gone over my lips with a little bit of foundation just to take down the tone so you guys get a true colour of the next lipstick that I'm using. This is the last lipstick in the collection today. This is Max Ruby Woo, which is a matte vivid blue red. It's a colour that really does make your teeth look a little bit whiter. It's a colour that I've had in my kit for so many years. Not something I ever reach for for myself because I don't really ever wear a red. But for clients, it's a classic colour. Although yesterday I did wear this for the entire day after I filmed and I loved it. Again, this is not a colour that you want to apply straight to your cheeks unless you want to look like Aunt Sally. So mix in a little bit of moisturiser or foundation. I definitely say foundation will tone it down slightly for you. It really does enhance the coolness of the undertones of this lipstick, which work beautifully on the cheek. As you know, I'm somebody that always reaches for more warm tone blushes. It just works with my skin tone, but with this lipstick, I'm totally converted. I think this is so beautiful together. It also depends on what you're wearing, so it works nicely with my outfit, which is from Shopsider, and I will link it in the description bar for you. This was my favourite pairing out of all the colours that I've shown you today. What has been your favourite? Let me know in the comment section below, because I really want to know. Remember, if it's too punchy for you, go in with a foundation brush that has a small amount of foundation residue in it, and it will really help to dilute and tone down that colour pigment. The last step for me and a little bit of a tip is to apply some setting powder or finishing powder through the centre of the face but at the very beginning of your blush and it will help with that transition. So what do you think of this pairing? I think this is my favourite, it's so so pretty. I will list and link all the lipsticks I've used and recommended in the description bar. If you enjoyed this video and you would like another one just to show you some more lip colour combos, I can do that for you, just let me know in the comments section. Thank you for watching, please subscribe if you are new to my channel, come follow me outside of YouTube over on Instagram, and I will see you in a couple of days with another video. Bye guys!